In this lesson, we're going to cheat a little bit. So we're not really looking at a plugin, but for all intents and purposes, it's going to function that way. And this is also going to round out the hat trick, so to speak, of these sorts of text replacement, text expansion tools. So we started with SparkUp, and then we moved over to Snipmate, which is like TextMate. And now we're going to take a look at converting Markdown to HTML, and the easiest way to do that within MacVim. Okay, so if you're not familiar with Markdown, it's simply a way that allows you to write HTML much quicker. So for example, instead of creating a list, something like this, and then you create all of your list items. With Markdown, you can simply do my list. And the dash represents each list item, and it'll go ahead and create the wrapping HTML. Let's say you want to create a block quote, and with HTML, you would do it like that, right? Within Markdown, you would just do something like this. This is my quote. So some people feel that it's not worth learning because you then have to learn all of these symbols. But to be honest, it's a five minute task. If you'll just memorize it really quickly, you never have to worry about it again. So that's really a non-issue. And especially even if you're doing things like GitHub documentation or things like that, it can save you a lot of time. And I know plenty of people that create their HTML and Markdown and then convert it to HTML when they're finished because it saves them a little bit of time. So it's whatever you prefer. Let's go ahead and install this. So the first step is to download this. Now, in order to work with this with Vim, we need to place it into one of our bin files. So if we open this up, you'll see that you have this markdown.perl file. So let's stick in the GUI today. And we're gonna go to user, local, and we're going to place this within the bin. And this is everything if you ever hear somebody refer to your runtime, these are the files that'll be available. And that's where you can see things like SAS and Haml and all of that fun stuff. So all you have to do is open this up and we're gonna drag it in. And that way it'll be available to us at runtime. Okay, and with that copied over, I can close this out. And now let's go ahead and play around with it and see what we can do. So I'm gonna create a new file. And within here, I'm just going to begin typing some markdown. This is a list and if we want to create headings heading two here and some paragraphs and then we could do a heading four heading four here so it really will save you a lot of time just in case you're not familiar with it I'll do a few more uh, let's say if you want to do some code code snippet goes here or if we want to do a bigger block of code we can do four spaces one two three four bigger block things like that. Okay, so that's going to be fine right there. So now I can save this if I want. If I want to convert this to Markdown, I have to first provide a path to where that markdown.perl file is. That way it knows what to use to convert this. So I'm going to press colon and I want to work with the whole file. So I'll press percentage and then exclamation point will make sure that I can run a command, an actual terminal command line command. So here I'm going to pass in a path to where that file was stored and we put it in user local bin markdown.perl and now we can call the commands that we need and it's called html for tags. Run it and look at that it's converted for us but one problem is we don't want to run that every single time do we? So it would be easier if we could turn that into a little quick keyboard shortcut. So let's go into our vimrc file and set up a shortcut. And here we are, so I'm just gonna scroll down and find a place to put it. And you know what, right there is fine. And we'll call it markdown to HTML. Okay, so we're gonna create a mapping, but in normal mode. So when you're within the normal mode, create a mapping in map. And all we're gonna do here is provide it with a leader. So that would be what the default leader is within your installation, usually it's a backslash. And then that'll be MD for markdown. So by default, that would be backslash MD. And what that's going to do is it's going to run this command. And we're gonna do the exact same thing, local bin markdown.perl, and we're gonna run HTML for tags. And then when we're done, we wanna press enter because this is just something that'll it's kind of like a quick command. It'll do whatever you tell it to. So it's going to run that, but now I want it to press enter. So I'll do a carriage return and that's it. So I'm going to save that and let's close out of MacVim and restart it just to make sure that everything's taking effect. And I'll find my testing file and now let's try it out. So if everything's working correctly, when I'm in normal mode and I type leader MD, it should convert all of this and I'll try it. Leader MD and there you go. That's fine. But one problem here is it would be helpful when writing your markdown if it had 
syntax highlighting, wouldn't it? And that's the next thing we'll grab. So we'll go to this page. It's created by someone named Plastic Boy, and it's simply a syntax file for Markdown. So let's go ahead and install that. And if we open this up, again, we can see that there's an FT detect and a syntax file. So sticking with the GUI route, we're gonna open up our Vim folder, and we're just going to manually drag these over this time. And we'll do the same thing for FT detect. Notice MKD for markdown. Okay, that's all there is to it. So I'll close these out. And once again, I wanna make sure that everything takes effect. So I'm gonna restart MacVim just to be safe. And we'll find that testing file. And now it's not picking up that syntax highlighting, and it's because it's looking for a file extension of MD for markdown or markdown.markdown. But you can tell it to use that file type by using command set file type or set FT shorthand. And then I can say MKD for markdown. And that should do it. So if I expand this now, you can see now that's picking up all of those code blocks. So if I create something new, like a heading three tag. So this is really helpful when you're creating your markup. So let's save this as testing.html. And to give you an example, we'll combine the Snipmate plugin. We'll combine all of them. So let's get rid of all of this. Okay, and we'll go ahead and combine all three of these tools we've learned in the last three lessons. So we'll begin with SparkUp. I'll do HTML and create a head tag and a body tag, and that's fine. So I'll press Control E to expand that, okay? And within here, let's use the Snipmate plugin. I'm gonna create a wrapping div, so I'll type div tab, and we'll give that a name of container. And within here, we'll create another div, just for example, main. Okay, and now within here, we're gonna do the third plugin, and we're gonna work with Markdown. And we'll say, here's a heading, and some text goes here, along with a list. And we'll do our list, first thing, second thing, third thing. And then we'll do block quote here. And then finally, a code fragment. And that's it. So now we've combined all three of them. If I want this to take effect, I can type leader MD. Now pay attention though. So when I type it, it's going to appear to be all screwed up. And that's because it is space dependent. So in this case, it would be smarter if we put this all at the beginning. And then if I run it again, backslash MD, that'll go ahead and fix it. And then you can run some kind of auto formatting command on your HTML to make it cleaner if you want. Okay, so that rounds out the three different ways that you can rapidly create your markup. You can use the SparkUp plugin to create your structures. You can use the Snipmate plugin to quickly expand blocks of code or really whatever you want. And then you can use the markdown to HTML technique to convert your markdown directly to HTML when you need it. So in the next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at JavaScript and the JS Hint plugin. So stick around.